What's up, guys? I'm Coach Jolo. With me today is Cam Clamp Lampkin. What's up, man? How are you today? What's up, man? How's it going? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Thanks for hopping on here with me today. Um, before we get started, I mean, let, let's. I want you to tell everybody just about yourself just a little bit. Some of your accomplishments. I know you're a college football champion. Go ahead. Just list them off for me. Uh, starting from, I'll, I'll start from high school. Yeah, um, please. High school, high school, uh, my freshman year, I played freshman football. I was, uh, I was a quarterback. Um, wasn't that tall. I thought it was like five, 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 six. And then my sophomore year, I transferred to receiver. And I was, you know, mm -hmm. I was playing often, I was playing receiver, getting the ball a lot. Uh, my first year on varsity, I started on varsity my sophomore year. Uh, my junior year was the year that I kind of gained the confidence to know that I can go to college. So I put in extra work, put in yeah. extra time, um, got stronger, got faster, worked on my craft. And senior year, I signed my letter of intent to Utah State. Nice, nice. Um, when you were on that Utah State team, y'all actually, I wouldn't say y'all were good, but y'all were above average. Um, went to the L.A. Bowl, had Jordan Love at quarterback. Talk to me about being in a room like that. You're in a team that's actually going out to a bowl you're winning that bowl game what what's it like what was that like what was that experience like uh going to the bowl game was um it was a great experience i would say the experience of going to the bowl game showed me that you know the stuff that you do and do um that's in the dark mm -hmm. more than likely that stuff is going to come to light like the work that's done when no one's watching no one's yeah. around when you're hurting tired mm -hmm. sweating you know, frustrated. All these things you'll start to re benefit once those things once you start to align, you know, these things up, you know, with certain with certain things, with certain people, keeping a certain amount of people around, having the right amount of people around. Mm -hmm. And I just say just um just stand like stand positive, you know, through through uh through all the adversity that comes yeah, with it. Yeah. And I don't I don't really believe in adversity, I would say because, you know, playing football is really not adversity. I think right. we've all been through harder things. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I just think that uh, me personally, I've, I've, I've looked at it as a, a great experience just because of, I was playing with these NFL guys. And um, I think we had three NFL, I think we had three guys go to the, to the NFL that year. Um, my sophomore year, we didn't make it to a bowl game. And mm -hmm. that kind of hurt me. That, that, that hurt me because that was the, that was the COVID year. Yeah. You know, the COVID year yeah. kind of made everyone get a little set back, you know, everybody set back for it. Um, we didn't even think we were going to play. We only played six games. So it kind of like, it made me rethink, like, is this football thing? Like, is this kind of, you know, something that I want to do? Because I, mm -hmm. I started to lose the love for it at yeah. this time. Cause we didn't play. We wasn't playing when season was supposed to start. Exactly. Everything exactly. was going down south for us. So, you know, it was, it was just one of those. Yeah. I mean, um, just going up on a little bit more about that before, you know, we – went live on the podcast we were actually talking about it i was saying um you know your transfer portal time i left before transfer portal and most of my reason for leaving was outside of football season you know it it felt like dang the season's over what now you know that's the time where you're just grinding in the weight room you're trying to get better off the field um what what what's been your motivation what's been your push to keep going you know after the season ends, you know, when you don't make that bowl game, in your case, you, you're transferred. I'm, why don't you, let's start with that. I'm, I know I just gave you two different questions at once, but let's start with the transfer part. Um, you were, uh, I was from pre-transfer, you're transferable. What, what influenced you to transfer to Washington State? Uh, so after the 2021 season, we had won mm -hmm. a championship. We had, um, you know, went on, went on a, I mean, we had a nine game stretch that we were just like, we were just win, win, like back to back, yeah, nine game stretch. Yeah. And as we were, you know, building like chemistry with each other and everyone was getting very close, but we knew the season was ending. So as the season was ending, I didn't realize that, you know, things were going to move around. Like I said, yeah. me being a young guy, me being a young guy, not really understanding how the business side of it worked. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at it as if, okay, I built a relationship with this person. I want to stay with this person. I feel like this person has helped me, you know, become someone that that I was looking forward to becoming, but I didn't know how to. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I felt that if I stayed with this person, maybe this person could build me into something that 
I want to get to, you know, I, mm-hmm. I want to be this type of player. I want to be, you know, this type of person. So let me stay with this person who has, who has genuinely helped me and has genuinely open arms to, you know, let me come to his house, who treated me like his son, gave me rides, you know, food, you know, whatever, whatever I needed, you know, to, to keep me as, as a, um, you know, as a, as a fluent player, as you can say. Yeah. Um, because a lot of a lot of things was going on uh, during the 2021 year. Um, mm-hmm. My grandma, I mean my my grandpa died. Yeah. Uh, January 2021, I lost my grandma the year before that. So I, I was just dealing with a lot. Like it was just a lot of things that mm-hmm. I was dealing with that I didn't know how to handle, but I just felt like someone was there that could help me handle it. You know, like like yeah, it's hard, but at the same time, you've been through harder. You exactly. know what I'm saying? So exactly. I just thought that I just felt that at that moment, he just gave me the. the he just gave me the strength to just like you know you can keep going like, you can keep doing it just, just keep punching like you know keep fighting at it you know you know you gonna get what you want so. yeah and I and we'll segue that into the second part of my question which was more so um what's that motivation I'm like you were just talking about it when everything's going wrong you feel like all right you know I'm losing family at this point um I it's 24-7 football. When football season's over, it's 24-7 in the weight room. Get better. Got to keep my grades up. What what keeps you going? Because that's a lot, especially we're talking 18, 19, 20, 21. You know what I mean? You're you're a young guy. I Like I said, I, I folded. <laughs> Ain't no other way to put that. I was like, look, football's over. You win. I'm, I'm up in Pennsylvania. I don't want to be up here no more. It's getting cold. I ain't got nothing. You know what I mean? I, I said I'm yeah. going home, but you you're three years in at this three or four years in. Four years. In. Four years. Yeah. yeah. Four years. Four, in. four years into this, you know, what to this point has kept you going and kept pushing you and kept you from throwing in the towel with that. Uh, I would think something that really kept me going was um uh, me just me just talking to uh you know my brother my my mom mm-hmm. you know um different people that was around me that, that, that had been through this type of stuff. You know, I, I right. talked to, you know, some of my guys in the league right now. Uh, Devin Tompkins played for the, mm-hmm. for the Bucks. My big brother. Um, I talked to Jordan sometimes. Jordan loves sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it just, I, when I talk to these these guys, I ask them, like, you know, what what were some things that, that you were hurting at? Like, you know, some things that you just thought you couldn't do. Like, you, you when I say couldn't, you just say, you know what, like, this is not it. Like, I don't want to do this no more. Like, yeah. what were some things that made you, like, keep going? And a lot of them just said, you basically just got to, like, you just basically got to muscle through it. Like, I mean, yeah, it's something you don't want to do, but as a man, mm-hmm. you have to do it. Right. If this is what you want. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, like, exactly. I've been dreaming about playing, I've been dreaming about playing in the NFL for, you know, so I can, as long as I can remember. I you know. know I, I, so, I remember you used to think you was going to be a quarterback yeah, you know in the back in middle school. I think I was going to be a quarterback in the middle school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I always wanted this, but I already knew. If it's something that I wanted, it's something that I had to go get, and I mm-hmm. know that it wasn't gonna come easy. I know I was coming from a smaller school to a to a bigger school, so mm-hmm. I seen that in order for me to to actually get it, I have to actually go and get it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So I really just I really just put my mind to it. Like I mean, I didn't I didn't really think about none of the other outside things. Mm-hmm. I kind of just kept my focus on like tunnel vision, like the stuff that I knew I wanted. Okay, let's block out the girls. Let's block out the you know the the parties, drinking. You know, let's block this stuff out. But let's go this way. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just kind of had my mind focused on like, if I want the the prizes at the end of the tunnel, I mm-hmm. have to just keep trucking. Like no matter how I get there, no matter if it's fast or slow, at some point, like I have to get there. So I'm gonna just keep running. I'm gonna just keep walking. Like, you know, keep walking. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? It ain't gotta be a sprint. Like you know what I'm saying? It ain't gotta be a sprint because. Like I said, everything can't be rushed in this life. So, exactly. You know? I mean, and even talking a little bit more on the Washington State um, transfer, you're going from a Mountain West school to a Pac-12 school. Yeah. Uh, what was there any motivation, and I guess almost moving up a tier in college football? Or did it feel like it's just another day at work, or what was? Did that weigh in on you going to Washington State? How did that kind of play out? Uh, well, now that you say that, I haven't even really thought about it. I just kind of see it as like another day in the office for right. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing, I've been playing football all my life, so it just kind of mm-hmm. seemed like, yeah, the, the competition may be a little bit better, maybe, maybe it is, maybe not. But I know at the same time, like I've been playing football all my life. Mm-hmm. Football is gonna be football. I do the same thing I've been doing when I was at Utah State. 
the sad thing I was doing when I was at Ski Poti and a camp, bro. Yeah. You know, you know how it is. I, I know. Just, like, yeah. Whatever it is, and like, I just kind of, I didn't, I never looked at it as, oh, it's like this is one of the biggest stages. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I just looked at it as like it's another opportunity, it's right? Another opportunity to to get to the next step because I think it's a stepping stone. Because I always, mm-hmm. I said at a high school, I want to play Power Five high. Yeah. Oh shoot. Five football, mm-hmm. power five football, and then you know it's, a, it's another step to it. Exactly. Um, so let's let's go back to high school. I know you played quarterback in middle school. I remember, whew, that was fun. Um, that was fun. It was fun for y'all. I remember when I was in eighth grade, y'all were in seventh grade. Y'all were talking hella shit because we were a no win team and y'all were undefeated. But we ain't got to talk about that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no. Um, like, you, you played multiple positions. Um, yeah. Poti is, I, I, oof, I, I, was, I loved it my freshman year, hated it my senior because well, I was transferring back from Carter and my papers weren't signed so I couldn't touch the field. Um, yeah. But Poti's always been a, your best if you can play both sides of the ball. You played receiver and you played DB. What what was? But you played quarterback first. What was that transition yeah. first from when you were a quarterback to when you know you transferred to playing wide receiver and DB? What was that transition like? So so uh uh-uh. so um, as a. Uh, as I started my, my journey, you know, playing a quarterback, mm-hmm. uh, I never really wanted to be a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? I, I never really looked at it like I was a quarterback. But once I was playing it, I kind of made a love for it. So it was just like, you know, let's do it. Let's see if I can, you know, let's see if I can be an efficient quarterback. So yeah. as I was playing, uh, we got to my junior year. Uh, I actually went back to quarterback my junior year, first really? three games. Okay. So yeah, so we played um, played Midlothian our first game. Mm-hmm. And then we ended up playing Denton Ryan. Mm-hmm. And after Denton Ryan, we played Mansfield Lake Ridge. Yeah. So we won. We won a uh, Midlothian game, lost to Denton Ryan, and we won Lake Ridge game. Yeah. So after we played Mansfield Lake Ridge, uh, Coach Simpson, who was a, uh, the, the offensive coordinator at the time, mm-hmm. and the quarterback coach, he was he came up to me like, um, so we played that Friday, that Saturday, you know, everybody go up to school, you get treatment, you watch film. Right, you know, of course. You do all this type of stuff. So as I'm up there and I'm talking to him and he tells me like, yeah, Cam, you you you, you want to play receiver again? And I was like, mm, like that kind of put me in a position to where like I'm kind of locked in already. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I was kind of locked in already with the position, but I was just like, I'm gonna have to be like, I play receiver, I mm-hmm. play quarterback, I play running back, I play safety, corner. I was like, I, I can yeah. do it. So I jumped in the I jumped in the rotation and as I you know I jumped in. I um I started making a name for myself like right then, like like right then and there. Oh, I know. And I remember. At this time, yeah. yeah. And at this time, uh, beginning of my junior year, I had no offers. I had no offers, but I had a lot of interest. I was like mm-hmm. Kansas State. I had like Cincinnati. Like I had a whole bunch of interests, but right. It was some things that that I had to do in order to get these offers. That was you know, the ball. Like, you you exactly. got to make some type of plays exactly. to get these type of you know. So first game, my first game at receiver, we was playing uh forty. You know, I I had I think I had like three catches, one eighty six for like two touchdowns. And it's just like everything just started to like roll. Mm-hmm. Like I was getting the ball a lot, getting the ball every week, I was scoring two times, maybe three times a game. And like stuff just started clicking for me. I just think once I made that transition, it was like I can never go back to quarterback. Like I didn't I yeah, I love quarterback and I would definitely go back. If I got a chance to throw a fade ball right now in college, I would go and throw it. Like I, I would yeah. really go and throw a fade ball <clears> right now. But, like, and I said that about receiver. If I get a chance to play receiver, I'll do it. But it's just mm-hmm. things that, you know, it's certain stuff that you go through and you learn that applies to something else. Like, you can you can play quarterback, but you can play the corner, and you can understand, okay, when a quarterback does this, they're really looking at this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I kind of use, I kind of use the, the strengths that I was dealt with through, through like, basically use it against the other like use it against the position if that makes sense you know what yeah I'm of course so, of course yeah so i just i look you just take different pieces you know and then use it against them so you can't beat what you know already mm-hmm. you know exactly so you, you know what i'm saying so like mm-hmm. you think i don't know it i already know it 
Uh, exactly. Use it against you. Exactly. So, um, I mean, if we want to just keep talking on that just a little bit more, I mean, is there a way you would say that your time as a receiver influenced how you play DB, or is it just Cam the receiver, Cam the DB, and they're two separate um, entities in that? Oh, oh no, 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 no. I actually use uh, the same footwork as I used as a receiver mm -hmm. as a corner, like because everything like playing corner is the same thing as playing receiver. It's just corner you're going back, the exactly receiver's going forward, right? Like you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. so we may get we may get to the line. You know, Stephen may hard cut. I may just slide this way. You know what I'm saying? Or he hard cut, I hard cut. Yeah. You I'm... stop, I stop. It's like you know, it's kind of one of those. Like, but mm -hmm. like I said, I still work receiver drill. Exactly. Like, I still do receiver releases. I still do receiver breakdown. Like mm -hmm. I still want to learn this type of stuff. So whenever you do it, I don't already saw that. Exactly. I done already done that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like I use, I use that against a lot of people. Like mm -hmm. we um most of the practice here we do one on ones a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh and the one on ones that we have we have we have great receivers at Washington State. We have great receivers. We have Kyle uh Kyle Williams. Yeah. Josh yeah. Uh, I wanna say y'all got some future uh, NFL talent uh, yeah. in y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we a lot of them. Uh, mm -hmm. other cornerback we got Shaw Smith, uh be another NFL guy. Yeah. Uh but we all of us like we done all been in this in a position to where Everything that a receiver's done, it's like we done seen. So it's really nothing that you can do to kind of like make me think. Exactly. That makes sense. Like, yeah, you know I saying? get you. I yeah. get you. Okay. I mean, would you say so? Um, playing football in Texas high school, we know how it go. You're you're playing better talent in quite a lot of states, honestly. You know, I'm yeah. coaching up in um, Illinois. There were teams are going that were going to state, and I'm like. This is a team that, you know, is just running through people. And it's like, because I'm so used to seeing talent pretty much from top down in every roster. Yeah. Um, would you say that playing football in Texas, especially playing DB, helped you develop when you're playing at a bigger program like Washington State or even at a program like Utah State? Well, how, how do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um... – just the talent alone, because I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of people, uh, a lot of a lot of the Texas talent has, you know, college and NFL talent as they're in high school. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. So like, uh, there's there's been there's been kids that I know that you know that, that probably could have went like straight to the uh, straight to college like sophomore year, freshman mm -hmm. year, but you know they stay all this time and then like now these guys are like in the league with Jackson Smith. Jackson Smith is in the league, but we all know how Jackson was when he was in high school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a so beast. It was, it was things like that that like yeah, like like a beast mode. So I was just looking at these things like it's it's like I played in really a mini NFL mini college yeah. in Texas. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like high schools in Texas were just as big as colleges. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and so even at that I was you, just looking at at Poteet, I know competition was always crazy. Um when yeah, I was at Carter, crazy. we we had a easy schedule to get into playoffs. But Poteet every year, I'm like, why why are you playing Denton Ryan week two or right. um, the year after you guys played Denton Ryan followed that up by um, Mansfield Lake Ridge when Jaden was playing running back at Lake Ridge or at I'm sorry not Lake Ridge um, Summit was playing running back Summit, at Summit. Man. Three plays yeah. into the game, he's breaking off from 98 yards, and I'm like. Is this, but like no, just thinking about it, that's a weekly thing, especially in five A, especially in Poteet, Mesquite in general is doing that. So you're in a mini NFL at that, you know. Y'all had, <clears throat> I'm sorry, y'all had Set. He was at Oklahoma. You went to um, Utah State. Who who else? Pretty much, I guess from that class, because. Y'all were the class uh, even in middle Dalton. school. We, knew. we had Dal yeah, we Dal had Dalton Dale. Yeah. Yeah, Lewis Moore. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rashard. Rashard Glassby. Yeah. Yeah, Rashard Glassby. We had uh, Dorian Morris. Yeah. Chris Moudreau. Mm-hmm. And I mean, uh, all y'all, y'all, y'all yeah. were kind of that class that I remember when we were in eighth grade or my freshman year when y'all were in eighth grade. We already knew y'all were going to be that class that y'all were a talented class. There's no really other way to put that. Yeah. So I, I think it's really cool to see, especially the cats like you who, you know, grow into the athletes that we knew y'all were going to be and knew y'all could be. So, um, I mean, yeah. sorry, I, I just had to give you a little praise there. But um, we'll just keep going. Um, how, 
how do you handle the pressure and expectation at the D1 level? Um, I there's temptation at every doorstep. I'm pretty sure. You know, yeah. it's yeah, uh, it's so easy it's to mess temptation. up. So I just I, think that uh, it's it's really not easy to mess up. I think it's only easy to mess up if you're thinking about messing up. If mm-hmm. you're just thinking, oh, I'm gonna. If I, if I don't do this, I'm gonna miss. If I don't know, if I do this, I know I'm gonna do this. But if I, but if you just like go, just do it. Yeah. You just never know. Like you know, what I'm saying you just never know what happens. So mm-hmm. I just think that it's never a pressure thing to it. I just feel like it's it's really it's on you. It's it's in here. So yeah. It yeah. It's, it's really everything. Everything college related, football related, basketball, track, tennis, golf, whatever you want, whatever sport mm-hmm. are you playing. There's no pressure, no static behind anything. Everything is between. It's like in the mind. Yeah. If your mind says not. If your mind says not there, you're not gonna be in it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. Your body. Your body can physically be there, but if your mind not there, you're not there. Exactly. So you just have to. You just have to understand. Like, yeah, it may be hard, but tell it. Tell yourself, oh, this is easy. This is hard. Exactly. It's hard. You know mm-hmm. it's hard, but you know it's hard. You you will live. Yeah, it may yeah. hurt by five to ten minutes but you live though you're okay um and i mean let's let's talk on mindset just a little bit more um every play i everybody is different um last week i had um xavier on the show and he was talking about he's a very calm individual when it comes into um in-game situation he's never really just thinking about it he's kind of just a high motor i know what i'm supposed to do is second nature let me go do it what's your mindset um, when you're on the field, um, my mindset, my mindset is just to win every rep. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like, I feel like the um, the work that I put in, the work that I put in through the week, the work my guys put in through the week, I feel like mm-hmm. that we should win every rep. So I'm not going in thinking, okay, let's be calm, let's do this. Yeah, you want to be calm. Exactly. Yeah, you want to be under control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to be poised. But at the same time, you need to think in your mind. I need to whoop your ass every play. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. every play, I'm I'm on your ass. So that's like mm-hmm. that's kind of how that's kind of how I go through everything. Like everything, like from weight room to practice to one on ones, even in the game. Like me and my friend, like me and my friends right now, we competing everything. Like it's like we literally got we got uh, table tennis in the locker. We got yeah. mini hoop. In the, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like and it's all competition. We, exactly. And it's all competition. Like, because mm-hmm. you, you never know. Like, when, when we competing right here in the game, it's easy to compete. Exactly. You competing, exactly. you competing on throwing on, 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 on a beanbag toss. Like, if you competing like that, when you get in the game and it's actually real, competition comes natural. Like, exactly. You want to win. Yeah. Man. Now you feel like you have to win. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's the so, only option. That's the only the only option mm-hmm. right now for us is to win. Like you have to. So right. That's kind of how I look at it. I just I look at it as, yeah, let's be calm. Yeah, let's be poised. But I need to whoop your ass before mm-hmm. anything. Like you know. So. Yeah. Um. So let's talk about um competition just a little more. I just want to know, what would you say your most memorable moment in your personal college career has been so far? Be that like an in, a memorable interception off somebody crazy uh pick six uh, any of that like what what's your moment so far uh my greatest moment mm-hmm. probably has to be winning the championship because i think winning the championship takes so much from january to december because this mm-hmm. is a year-long stretch like this is a year-long stretch so yeah from january 1st from the day i woke up january 1st 2021 i said mm-hmm. to myself i'm gonna be a champion at the end of this year yeah at the end of this year i'm gonna hold this trophy and I just played that through my head. Like, I played that through my head every day. Like, I know when I went to the weight room, I'm thinking championship. Yeah, it hurt. Yeah, I don't want to do it no more. But if I want to win, this is what it takes. Exactly. Like, let's do this right now. Like, mm-hmm. let's hurt right now. So, when we, and it's all said and done. We can be all smiles, hold the trophies, we got hats, confetti, you know, like, just just, just a, 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 <laughs> a mess. Like, on the field, it's just a mess. Mm-hmm. And I think that. I think my most like that's probably the most memorable moment I had. Just you know, playing San Diego State December fourth, twenty twenty one, and winning that game. Like winning that game, going out, winning that game. Like made me really like made me realize that everything that you do can it got something to it. Like no matter what it is, if you you're not doing something you're supposed to, if you're cutting corners, 
if you're uh, you're not trying to compete at the highest level, you're not doing yeah. what you're supposed to do, you're going to see that everything is going to go downhill. For exactly. You. you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, you're going to see that. But if you're doing what you're supposed to do, your grades are right, you're taking care of your body, you're lifting, you're, you're, you're in the film room, you're in the training room, you're doing everything you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. stuff starts to go up. And you have to you have to bring those type of people with you, though, because I, if, just think about it. Everyone wanted that type of time at the time. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, Man, we ain't gonna, man, we ain't gonna win. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you got those type of guys. But at the same time, though, I knew that, I knew that we, if we was gonna win. I knew I gotta take somebody. Mm -hmm. Let me take him. Okay, he takes somebody else. Let's take him. He gonna get somebody else. And then exactly. everyone just, you know, you just mm -hmm. gotta learn how to how to pick the right ones to get them to pick the right one. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. everyone's not gonna follow you. Everyone's not gonna respect you. Everyone's not gonna hear you. Mm -hmm. But you get the ones who respect you, and they get the ones who respect them, and the yeah. ones that respect them. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then as the chain gets longer, everyone starts to, you know, it starts to touch as as everybody like connect. You know, like a kinetic energy. You know? Yeah, yeah. When you touch some, you know, it touch and touch, and everybody just light up like it's like one of those. So, I mean, from that moment, I just kind of had like. I had one of those. I had I had a, I had a moment. Um, this was in March, March of 2021. I had broke my hand. I broke my left hand. Mm -hmm. uh, the second day of spring ball. So the second day of spring, I broke my left hand, and I couldn't practice the rest of the spring. So my goal was I was I was devastated. You know, I cried like, damn, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna start. I'm not gonna play next year. Like, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen? Woo, woo. And I just kind of took it upon myself to say, you know what? Let me get this team together. Cause like I said. I want to be a champion. Yeah, I might not play whatever, whatever's going to happen, but I'm going to hold this trophy. You know exactly. what I'm saying? I'm going to hold exactly. this trophy at some point. So I just, I just brought energy. Yeah, let's go, bro. Like, I just take guys. Like, yeah, let's let's go to the, let's go to the river, whatever. Let's, let's float down the river. We get 30 guys, everyone get a float. We roll down the river four or five hours. Just, just mm -hmm. bonding, talking about stuff, you know, campfires, bonfires, you know, yeah. party, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Like, guys spend a night in the locker room. We had it. We had a, um, we camping on the field, like sleeping on the, we had bringing tents, camping on the field for yeah. the next morning. Like, you know, doing stuff like that, mm -hmm. just having everybody around each other. Like, and when we had each other around, it just felt like we was unstoppable. Like, no one could really stop us. And then first game, we come to Washington State. We played Washington State 2021, as, as you know. Yeah. We won. <laughs> but, you know, uh, like, once we came here, like, we just kind of felt the energy because it was just like, we were losing at one point, and we mm -hmm. scored. So once we scored and we went up, we was like, okay. Like, everyone started to feel it. Like, okay, that's what kind of what everything was. Like, you know, from mm -hmm. the campings to the to the, to the guy trips, to the walk in the mountains with 30, 40 people. Uh, you know, going to the river when it's 30 people. Like, and it's just like, it's just connected because we were losing. Like, we were, we were really losing the whole game. You know mm -hmm. what I'm mean? saying? But no one really got to that point to where it was like, uh, it was like, bro, like we ain't gonna win, like we gonna lose. They're like everyone just kept their head high. We just all stayed prayed up, kept our spirits high, and you know, things came out how, how it was supposed to. Yeah, I mean, so you'd say camaraderie plays a really big part, um, in yeah, a successful definitely. team. Um, I like I said, y'all, respectfully, y'all weren't the most talented team, you know, but y'all got things done, pretty much because y'all camaraderie was next level. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mm -hmm. think that's a really common misconception. You can have one of the worst teams out there and succeed pretty much because at the end of the day, you're playing for the guy next to you. Um, yeah. it, it's like, it, I, I know we keep going back to it, but it was like that at Poteet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's any major program that you go to and you have that, you know you're in a successful place. And I'm successful, but and definitely. I'm happy because it sounds like you know you're in a place like that still, which mm -hmm. that's good as well. Um, just kind of moving on though, uh, how what I every DB is different when it comes to this. What what is film study like for you? I, I just want to know, um, what what is film study like for you? Film, uh, it kind of depends on like you know what 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 we running, mm -hmm. depending on what type of schemes that's that's going into the game plan. Yeah. Um, if it's a big man week, you know, if it's a big man, uh, man to man week, maybe I'll focus on one receiver, you know, or, mm -hmm. or one specific side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or if it's like a, if it's a, if it's a week to where we're gonna play a lot of zones, a lot of, a lot of, uh, 
you know, a lot of cover threes, fours, you know, one, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of look at the, the the spacings, like where's people lined up at? If this guy is right here, which route do you get? You know, do you get fade? Do you get slant? Do you get post? Do you get in? You know, like you know, stuff yeah. like that. Just depending on what type of week we're running. You know what I'm saying? If we're mm-hmm. gonna run man, I'm gonna watch one person. If we're gonna run zone, I'm gonna see one side of the field. I'm gonna see from a tackle all the way to the sideline. Like, I'm gonna see. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Because if I can figure out your game plan in, yeah. in five days, it's a wrap. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I can figure out your whole game plan in five days, it's a wrap. Mm-hmm. So, um, just moving forward from that as well, um, what's in the future for Cam? When it comes to Clamp, what what you going to the league? That's is that something that you plan on doing, or you want to go back and become a coach, teacher, or something like that, or what 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 is the future? What do you want the future to hold uh, for yourself? Uh, yeah, I want I want I want to play in the league for a very long time. Mm-hmm. You know, I I really I, I've been dreaming about this probably since I was I can barely walk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really I've been wanting to play football for a long time. I love you don't see myself doing anything else besides you know playing football for a minute. Um, I do have the desire to coach. You know, after football, um, I talked to some of uh, some of my former coaches. You know, former high school coaches. Yeah. Yeah, I want to come back and coach. You know, at Pot. You know, I want to. I want to be a DB's coach. But, you know, yeah. I, yeah. I feel like I got enough knowledge. I feel like I got enough knowledge and enough game to to give DBs who who want to become you know something different. Yeah. If you want to become this type of person, let me show you. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. I done been through this. Yeah. I have the experience. I done played offense. I done played. You know, what I'm saying I done done this type of stuff. So let me teach. The ways that let me let me teach you how to cheat the offense. If that makes exactly, sense. believe it or not, this is yeah. actually ironic. You brought that up. Um, Coach Huber actually hit me up last summer, asked if I wanted to come and coach up at Poti because you know I took a coaching job up here in Illinois. So I was like, yeah. dang, he hit me the day after I signed. Day after, you took the day job. after I'm like, Coach, I didn't just hop on a plane. I'm up in Illinois now. You hit me a day too. You know what I mean? But no, it's crazy. Way too late. Yeah, it's, I, I really do think um, one thing I do enjoy, though, is being able to not just speak from the, oh, I know the X's and O's, but speak from the, hey, I've been in your position on the field. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I told you earlier, I was one of those guys who, I, outside of football, I didn't really care about the education side of it. I did it because I had to yeah. so that I could stay on the field, you know? Yeah. Understanding those type of guys. Um, teaching guys that, hey, you know, there is life outside of football, which that's one yeah. thing. Um, one big difference between my time at Poteet and my time at um, Carter is life outside of football was taught. Um, rem- I don't know if you remember, they used to have us sitting butt to nut during off season in Poteet yeah. with the character <laughs> lessons and things like that. Believe it or not, at Carter, there was nothing like that. You know what I mean? It was football, track, back to football. That's literally the order in which it went, you know? There's no character lessons. There's nothing outside of what we're doing on the field. And it translated because the difference is I, I could 100% tell you um, at the quarterback position alone, we had a quarterback at Carter that I feel like in the right with the right team could have been in the league by now, you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The running back before me, Be Good, was at Kansas State. Before him, um, Reggie was at TCU. But honestly, outside of a single season, none of us stayed past one season at the college we were first at. And it came down to like, we weren't pushed on that education side. You know what I mean? Uh, what What do you think, if you were to ever go into coaching, would be the skill that make you most successful at it? Um. The skill that would make me most successful, I would think, I would think the character side. I mm-hmm. think I'm really, I'm big on character. Yeah. I'm, I'm big on how you act when no one's around you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I think that, I think a lot of people get this stuff confused because when you hear about, you know, the the, the, the don't don't cancel me for this. When you no, hear you about good. the rape allegations, you know, you know, you hear about the rape allegations. You hear mm-hmm. about the the, the the robberies, the murder. You know, you you hear about stuff like that. It's low key coming from. Yo, what peer pressure, exactly friends, situations. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It, mm-hmm. it comes from those type of things. So I think that um, I'm real big on character because I feel like if you can understand that, yeah, you may can do that stuff, 
when no one's looking at you mm-hmm. or, or when it's dark outside or when you think no one's watching you exactly but everyone is watching you exactly like someone can see you like mm-hmm. and i feel like I feel like me being me being the type of person that I was, you know, me being a knucklehead at at, yeah. at Poti, you know, getting in you know, stuff that I knew I wasn't supposed to. Looking back on it, it kind of made me think that that stuff that I was doing then, I didn't even have to do because exactly. looking at myself now, mm-hmm. I wouldn't even done that type of stuff. Like, you know, what I'm I wouldn't mm-hmm. have never even thought like that. Ain't even a thought right now. Exactly like, from the way that from the yeah, from, like from the stuff that I'm trying to do, from the way that I'm trying to go, that's mm-hmm. not even a thought. Like if I want to get to this next, if I want to make millions of dollars playing the game of my love since I've been playing since I was like three years old, four years old, mm-hmm. that other like character is a big thing. Like the league, look at character. Forget how good you are at football. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Being good, exactly. It's, it's, everyone in the league is good. Like you know, mm-hmm. everyone in the league is good at football. But if the character is horrible, what what they don't want you. They don't right. want you to invest. You are an investment. Why would someone mm-hmm. invest millions of dollars in you? When you a knucklehead, you know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. So you you hard headed, you know what I'm talking about? So I just look at it like when I when I know I when I take over a certain a certain school and I take over a certain group of kids, mm-hmm. one thing I will instill in them is your character will define you. Exactly. You I, I mean, that my motto would be: you won't play for me if your character is off. Mm-hmm. I don't care how good you are. You can be the best of the best. You can be number one DB in the country. Yeah. I don't need you because I can get three more other dudes who can be number one DB in the country. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I, uh, I believe it or not, that's something I said as well this past season. It was yeah, I'd rather like, lose every game without you than win every game and you be a cancer to the rest of the team. You being cancer, exactly. Like, you just can't bring everybody mm-hmm. down. Cause if we, if you were cancer to to this group, you may be a cancer to the O line, exactly. You may be a cancer to the D line, mm-hmm. you cancer to the running back, the quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, need, I don't need you to to bring everyone exactly. else down because exactly. you want to act a certain way. Mm-hmm. If everyone else acting, if everyone else acting high character, good guys, stand good, grades good, you know, come to school, uh, you know, dress good, not look nice, you know what I'm saying? Like all that type of stuff yeah. matters. Like that stuff matters, like mm-hmm. for real. Cause I think that, yeah, high school, you know, you come to school with the sweatpants, you know, and all this stuff. That's cool and all. But when it's get when it actually get down to it, bro, look nice, bro, and and bring it, it come in a certain way to people. A first impression is everything. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? A first exactly. impression is everything. So if your first impression, if me, your first impression to me is you a knucklehead, you a knucklehead for oh, the yeah. first time I know you. It don't matter yeah, you how you act after. after you. Yeah. yeah, no matter how you act after that, I mm-hmm. know you as, yeah, you a knucklehead. Bro. Exactly. I know you. I, exactly. I, I, I know how it is. Yeah. So, and I mean, let's. That's something, that's something I'm going to really teach, though. Yeah. And let's talk on character just a little bit more. Um, when it comes to your character, how, how do you deal with. Um, failure I that's a big part of character um just simple as that on the field off the field how do you deal with failure it's so easy to you know everybody can talk about hey when we're up we're up but when we're down how are we reacting how how do you personally deal with failure uh I think my my thing is I just I just look at the people beside me you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying I, I look at other people's faces you know yeah. if, if I fail I look at your face did I let you down Mm-hmm. That let him down. Okay, I let these people down. Let me lift these people. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let me let me lift the spirit back up. Cause mm-hmm. I can't be down on myself. If I know I fail and I'm already down on myself, guess what I'm gonna do next time? Fail again. Exactly. Guess what you doing? You're gonna keep failing because you're down there. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna fail again. And you're just gonna keep. You know, like, you, the cycle is just gonna keep mm-hmm. going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that one thing I I took from you know, me being that type of person. Once I failed, I looked at it, I reflected on myself. What did I do wrong? I didn't do this right. I didn't do this right. Okay. Let me not focus on all these things at once. Let mm-hmm. me do this one first. I may be failed at the rest of these, but I'm a pa- I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna be successful on one of them. Exactly. Okay, I get that out the way. The next time I go back, I failed this one, I'm gonna get this one right. So now yeah. I got two wins now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I just stack them like, yeah, you might fail the rest of them, but win one. Exactly. All you need is one. Mm-hmm. Like, all you need is one win. So if you win that one, okay, come to the next one. Win that one, okay. Next one, win that one. Just take it. I just feel like I kind of take things slow when I know I fail. When I know yeah. I fail, I slow it down. Okay? Just slow it all the way back down. <clears throat> and once you start to win, pick it back up. Get, exactly. get back to you know yeah. where you was at. Get back comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how it is. A failure. A failure is not even a failure. It's a learn. Exactly. Learn from it. Exactly. You don't even fail. Like. 
I don't even believe in where it fail. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it's, so, it's certain words that you can't even believe in because you know they nigga about. Mm-hmm. And a failure is one of those thoughts. A failure knowing that you know that you fail. So, yeah. I think that for me, for me, taking a, 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 a learn will actually grow. You know, it, it actually grows you taking a learn. Like, once you, once you learn something, mm-hmm. like, okay, I know next time, this is what I'm going to do next time. Okay. Like 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 playing corner, you get beat on the on a you get beat on a route, you are gonna come back next time and say, okay, let me take away this. So if you run this route, I'm gonna sit here. But if you right. run this route, I know you got it. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's just kind of one of those things. You just gotta know, learn from it, digest it, go and do it. Like yeah, that's kind of what it is. Now speaking of learning from it, and pretty much moving on from that, uh, if you had to, if you met younger you right now. What would be the advice, just staying on the topic of learning from things, that you give younger you? Let's take it even back further. Let's go seventh, eighth grade you back when you was yeah. hooping as well. You know, I ain't forget about that. But <laughs> uh, I would say younger me, just um, just being on the fact to where my, I would tell my younger self is, don't don't rush like no don't don't rush the life like. You don't want to rush it to get to where you want to go. Right. You know what I'm saying? You want to make the most of out of what you can right now. Like, exactly. From seven, if I if, if I was to go back to seventh and eighth grade, I would tell myself, be more be more enthusiastic to play football, basketball, mm-hmm. to run track. Because it just felt like once I got to seventh and eighth grade, I was just ready to get to high school. Like, yeah. I even, yeah. I think I, we all like were. right now. I can't even tell you. I can't even really remember a memory from middle school besides football, and basketball. I don't know nothing else. Like, yeah. I don't remember nothing in school. I don't remember no teachers. Like, if I could just go back and, and really, okay, let's slow it down. Let's get to really remembering things. Mm-hmm. Let's get to really making connections with people. Because I know once I get older, like, this stuff is going to fly. I will exactly. never go back to middle school ever mm-hmm. again. You know, I would never go back. So if I can learn, if I can slow down that process to say, okay, Let's slow down life. Let's not even worry about high school yet. High exactly. school is gonna come. Mm-hmm. You know, high school definitely. You gotta go to high school. It's yeah. gonna be here. But my thing, I would say, for myself, be in the moment. Be there, like now. Like be where your feet are. We they tell us that all the time. Yeah. Be where your feet is at because if your feet are here, but your head is <clears throat> five months from now. You see what I'm saying? Like you, yeah. you just. Everything is all it's off. It's off because you're looking past something and you're not even realizing that it's right now. Like you gonna miss everything right mm-hmm. now because you're looking at five months from now. Like, so what, decide, what, what would you tell mm-hmm. high school you though? High school me, um, I would tell high school me to just just embrace the like em, embrace the people that are around you because mm-hmm. my my my. I would, I would say this, my senior year, I love my senior year. My senior year high school is probably some of the greatest memories I still have to this day. Like yeah. me and my friends still talk about like stuff that we did playing football. So I, even off season, like we wasn't even playing football. We had, you know, you had one class, two class in the, mm-hmm. in the second semester of high school. So we still talk about that stuff. Like, yeah, but you remember we went to Top Golf and that and that. Like, you know, it'd be like some of those things. But I think the time, like my freshman year to my junior year, I would say like started to build connections. Like I don't, I didn't. I realized if I would have started those connections in high school mm-hmm. and and college, I think I would have had way more connect. Because there's a lot of people who's who's graduated from Pope T who really have big jobs. Like yeah, like, big yeah, jobs. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then how you get so, that job? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's like how mm-hmm. did you get that? Like exactly. I remember when in school and you was just. You were, you were just like the little nerdy kid with the, you know what I'm saying? So, you, the, like, the kids who didn't, that? and it's always the kids who didn't say nothing. You don't remember Never their name till nothing. graduation day, and you like, I ain't had no classes with him. Who was that? Them be the, all that? the ones that, yeah. Them, them boys, they working at tech companies. And exactly. They CEOs, mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? So startups. I like and, all yeah. got. Yeah, startup. They business owners. They, exactly. You know, exactly. driving Lamborghinis and stuff. Like, and this is fresh out of high school. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, if I was, if I was to say, like, build connections, like, exactly, connections would take you so far. And I mm-hmm. think that's what a lot of people, that's what a lot of high schoolers don't understand until you get to college. Exactly. Like, yeah, college is the time to build connections. But if you can build those high school connections as kids, 
and yeah. then you like grow up and get older, it's it's even better because you will meet you gonna really meet your best friends in college. Exactly. So you gonna meet some of your best friends mm-hmm. in college. But if you can eat, actually meet, if you can remember those people from high school and have best friends in college, everything kind of molds because exactly. you can be like. Okay, yeah, this is my best friend from high school. This is my best friend from college. Let's go. You the CEO over here. You the CEO over here. I'm just now getting out of college. I need a job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you got friends who can say, I remember you. You, you was always nice to me. You want a job? Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, you need a job? Like, that's the type of thing that I really wished out of high school I could have I could have established. Because I think I only established those type of connections when I got to college. I didn't establish yeah. those type of connections in high school because I didn't even know. I didn't even know that that type of stuff was real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's it, when you're in high school, it, it you feel like a kid. You know, I, yeah. even looking back yeah. on my senior year now, which that's a forever ago because yours is forever ago at this point. But man, <laughs> compared to where we are now, we, we were kids. You know what I mean? You you don't yeah. have that mindset that we have now as adults who are working in sports, playing sports, living out, you know, life at this point. We're we're in a totally different place than we were. Um I mean, so mm-hmm. just moving on from that just a little bit. Um I I want to go backwards just a little bit. A question I forgot to ask earlier. What um I I know you had some type of offers out of Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Te- Texas had, uh, Texas College had, offered every single one of us from Carter. There's no way in the world four. that you didn't have no offers in Texas. Is there anything no, that I you- have? <laughs> I have four. Yeah. Four. I, yeah, I have four. I had Texas State. Mm-hmm. I had Texas Southern. Mm-hmm. Uh, SFA. And then uh, another one. Sam Houston. Okay. So is there Sam anything Houston. that, I guess, influenced you away from playing college ball in Texas? I know Daquan was playing right up, pretty much up street in Tulsa. Uh, what, yeah. you didn't, was it like a, you didn't want to be close to home? You were looking to expand or was that just the best opportunity for you? But what yeah, influenced I was, you I really to, wasn't trying to play at home. I really mm-hmm. wasn't trying to play at home. Uh, I, I look, he took the thing that, I took it to where, like, my mama knew, my mama knew that I was always the one to, to go. I wanted to yeah. get away. I wanted to be, you know, somewhere where no one could come. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted <laughs> yeah. to be, like, one of those. So isolated. I had, um, yeah, I don't want to be isolated. So I had I had offers from, like, Louisiana. I had offers on the uh, East Coast. I had, like, Liberty. I had mm-hmm. UConn. I had some offers in Florida. Some in Cali. I had all of my West offers. And then I looked at Utah State, and I was like, bro, Utah State is kind of different. Like, no one really ever went to Utah State, like, like what is it, what is it? Utah State, and at the time, um, me not really knowing, um, like what Utah State was, what was their record, who was there. I didn't even know who Jordan Love was at the time. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. He was an NFL type quarterback, but I'm not even knowing. Like, dang, this guy, this that guy, NFL guy. Like, okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know what, I can I can do this. So I take the visit. As I'm taking the visit, you know, um, they they treat me like royalty, like because first off, takes care. I'm Always. literally, I'm literally yeah. like. But yeah, I'm just always like I'm a Texas kid there. I'm like I'm the only kid on the visit. I'm literally the only kid. What? Like, come on, LeBron. Yeah, you gonna you gonna be hey, like, you gonna commit to us, All right? And in my head, I'm like, bruh, I might commit here, man. Like, I don't, I ain't really, I ain't really thought about like, but I'm gonna commit here. Mm-hmm. So the you know the thing go on, and I leave Sunday. I leave Sunday morning. As I'm coming back, I'm telling my mama like. I ain't gonna lie, I like I like, kind of like Utah State. She's like, you don't like Utah State? <laughs> you know, you know how your mom. Is. But, yeah, you know, but you don't like Utah State. my mom's same I'm way. Like, you, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm like, I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Like, I like it for real. Like, she's like but you know, like Mormons and stuff. I'm like, yeah, like that don't mean nothing. Like, it's school. Like, it's football, school, mm-hmm. and next level. Like, I'm not even worried about life after. Like, I'm not even worried about life in, in Utah. Exactly. Get life in Utah. So, uh, September eighth come around. I took the visit. September. No, I took the visit August. 30th? It was like end of August. Yeah. End of August, right before we played uh, Tyler Lee. So we played okay. Tyler Lee. Uh, no, yeah, we played Tyler Lee in, um, in, uh, that weekend, that Friday. I left mm-hmm. to go to Utah State 
that night. Like, we got back yeah, and went to the airport that to, night. Wow. Yeah, got to the airport that night. So, as I was there, uh, I told my mom, I was my mom, you know, and I was like, you know what? I was like, commit. Like, I'm going to just commit. And then she was like, you really want to go to Utah? Like, what's in Utah that you like in Utah so bad? I was like, man, these people good. Like, they were top 25 in the nation. Jordan Love was going to the lead. They had good running backs going to the lead. They had um, like two receivers that was lead bound. They had a tight end that was lead mm-hmm. bound. Three DBs that were lead bound. Um, like four D linemen. Like they had a lot of people that was going lead. So I was like, I kind of like this little school. Like this little school ain't really known, but they good. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and, and at that time, forget the being known part. Like, yeah, being known is good. You want people to know your school. Mm-hmm. But if your school is not good, like, don't nobody really care like you know what i'm saying yeah so you got to really look at it as who's winning what's the type of culture they have there like if you winning if the coaching is good if you got guys who can actually make it to the next level that's where i'm at like that's the right. way i'm trying to go i'm not trying yeah. to be around you know uh an environment that's not gonna have guys go to the like that's kind of mm-hmm. how i would not to, not to throw shade on any other schools but i had a school who was like off me and telling me like hey, you come here you can start you can do this you can have a single digit number you can you can be this you can be that I'm like yeah that sounds good and all but y'all not winning the game exactly you know what I'm saying like exactly. I want to win like mm-hmm. yeah 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 the luxury and all this stuff sounds good but y'all not winning these things so there's mm-hmm. no point in me to come and bring my talent my hard work my dedication my character here somewhere where it's, it's not even gonna be yeah, showcased exactly yeah yeah like, I want to go somewhere where even if I don't start or if I don't play, I know I'm around guys who are good. Yeah. Like, we're going to win, though, so I mm-hmm. can learn from these guys. I'm good. Like, I, I was good my sleep my freshman year. And I was going, I was at Utah State where guys who were good. So I was just learning from these guys that were exactly. good. Exactly. Like, these guys was like, like, these guys was nice. So I just learned that, okay, let me take this from his game. I'm going to take this from his game. Mm-hmm. He a little aggressive, so I like the aggressive he takes. So let me take a little bit from that. So I was just taking piece, piece, piece from these guys, and they were winning. But if I would have went to a school up north, like East Coast up north, like Northeast, yeah, and team would have been, you know, team would have not been so good. Where I would have been at now? Exactly. Where's my I, name I, at now? Yeah, you know and I, mean? I think that's a thing a lot of, especially um, incoming college freshmen get twisted especially when they're going on visits and they're feeling like um they're the king of the world on these visits they go to it's one thing to go to a program where you know you're going to be a day one starter you'll get any number you want you can take a position if you want if it comes that easy to you that should not be where you want to go that should not should be where you want to go that should be the biggest red flag of them all you know (laughs) definitely (laughs) If I'm not the number one recruit in the nation, and hell, even if I am the number one recruit in the nation, if I go on my visit and you're telling me my spot given to me, exactly, let me earn it just like everybody else, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm Because the way I see it, especially, what? How many stars were you at high school? Three. Uh, Three stars, yeah. Yeah. So you're a three-star corner. No disrespect, but if you go into a college visit and this school's telling you you're the guy, yeah, you can. One through nine, if you want it, I'd strip it off his back right now and give it to you. You you know what I mean? It sounds yeah. good, but as it far as the development good. of you as a player and you as a person, what does that mean for that school? You know what yeah. I mean? You're you're yeah. basically saying, Yeah, you're not the best, you're the best that we can get. You know? Definitely. And Definitely. If, and the way I see it is, if the school that I'm looking to commit to isn't going after five-star guys, that's not a roster I want to be on. Because that means there's yeah. a coaching staff in there that's content with being okay. Mm-hmm. You know? And mediocrity, I, mm-hmm. you that's one thing I loved about Poti. That was not tolerated, you know? <laughs> at all. At yeah. all. Yeah, that was bad. If all. you're okay with being okay, you're at the wrong school. You're playing the wrong sport. Go play tennis. But <laughs> go play tennis. <laughs> but no, seriously, that's that's honestly how I feel about that. Um, it kind of stri- strikes a nerve with me, just with those teams that feel that you know, when it comes to recruiting guys, you'd rather go for the three star and just say, yeah, we did it. We recruited somebody. We let him get what he wants, so he'll sign. Then saying, hey, 
I went after this guy because this is the guy that I feel like he'll compete. This is the guy that is mm-hmm. in our system, he will grow. This is the guy that in our system will become the equivalent of a five star guy. This is the guy who will outwork the next five star guy. If we bring, if we tell him right now we're bringing a five star in to compete with him, he's not going to hit the portal. This is the guy that's going to come in and outwork him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's the type of program mm-hmm. that I'd be personally looking for. But I'm sorry about that, yeah, Brent. Just moving on, though. So, for young athletes right now, um, I'm sure you're still plugged into Mesquite and the community and all that. Um, yeah. What would you tell an incoming freshman this year, incoming to the POT system? They play receiver. They play DB. You're the kid they look up to. What 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 would be your advice to that kid? Um, my advice to them, I would really say, um, just 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 work on your craft. You know, yeah. don't don't look at it. Don't look at it to where I gotta have offers or mm-hmm. my my homeboys getting offers and I don't have any. Or you looking at it at well, coach ain't looking at me right now. He not really he not really feeling me. He don't think I'm good enough or I'm playing. You know, freshman, I, I should have been playing VAR. Like, it ain't even about that because right. everyone's role is different. Everyone's time is different. Like, God's time for everyone. It is different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And one thing that I learned while I was at Poteet um, was you can't rush the process. Like, God got it. Like, he, he got you when, when it's time. Because yeah. think about it. If God gave you a million dollars right now without you working for it, you'll blow through it. Exactly. You, ten you, times you'll, you'll ten. blow through a million dollars right ten times I'll tell you'll blow yeah. through a million dollars right mm-hmm. now. He just gave it to you. He just up and gave it to you. But if you actually work and put your head down and you grind for it, you will actually more appreciate like yeah. okay, I'm on You varsity. know the value I'm of it now. Stay on it. You know exactly. the value of it now. So if mm-hmm. you work in and if you you're getting strong, if you you in a training room every day, if you in the film room every day, you talking to your coaches, coach, which they actually do better at. Coach, how you feel about you know, me working this type of technique. How you feel about, you know, us doing this type of technique? Like, go and, go and actually build a relationship with your high school coaches. Because mm-hmm. college is a different level. College is, is not about building relationships with coaches. Like, this is business. Like, these coaches can leave at any moment of the day. These coaches yeah. get fired at any moment of the day. Like, in high school, those coaches will be there four years, five years, six years, seven years. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it's like a coach will be, your college coach can literally be there three months, leave, mm-hmm. get another job, get paid another 60, like you know, another 600,000 somewhere and go to Alabama and be their quality control guy. You exactly. know what I'm saying? So like, exactly. they're not even a corners coach anymore. Like mm-hmm. it's one of those things to where like, just be aware of, be aware of the things that's around you. I want to say don't try to don't try to run everybody race because it's not even a race it's a exactly. marathon like you got to know okay i can sprint here i can walk here i can jog here i can crawl here i can maybe stop here like you got to like figure that part out because i think that's the hardest part of where the young guys don't really understand because i don't think the young guys understand it to where yeah my yeah my my, my homeboy he he's good enough to be on varsity but why I ain't good enough to be on varsity? Yeah. And then people start getting out of because they start not coming to practice. You know, mm-hmm. skipping school. Then you start, you know, you start smoking in school. You start doing other stuff you know you don't supposed to be doing. Stop caring. Because you know. Exactly. You know, you, you stop caring. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, so you just. It's going to be hard. The point of the freshman year offseason is to break you. Exactly. Like, that's the point. The point of the freshman offseason is to break you. You just have to show them, yeah, it's going to hurt. Yeah, I may be tired. Yeah, I may throw up. And yeah, I may get frustrated at you. But at the same time, I'm going to come back tomorrow. Exactly. And you're just going to have to do it again. Mm-hmm. And if you do it again, I'm going to come back tomorrow. You're just going to have to keep doing it. Like Until you start to figure it out, you're just going to have to take the hurt. Because I tell my little brothers this all the time. My little brother is freshman in high school now. Yeah, really? Yeah. And my little, yeah. My yeah, goodness, yeah. that make me feel man, old. <laughs> long, man, make us feel wow, old. Wow, that's crazy. Well, that's crazy old. because um, our little sister Bree, you know, she's going to be an incoming freshman this year as well. And wow. she was, uh, you remember, she was a baby baby. Wow. <laughs> so, she was a baby baby last time. To, wow. to think about, that just makes me feel old. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But, that just, no, you yeah. Good, bro. But it's like, I tell, I tell my little brother all the time, I'm like, bro. I'm like, bro, 
don't think that varsity is supposed to happen for you now. Like, I tell them all the time, bro. I'm going to keep it a whole book with you. Bro, you're not good enough to be a varsity yet. Like, I tell my little brother that all the time. Like, bro, I'm going to be the one to tell you because your coaches can't tell you that. Exactly. They ain't going to be the one to say you're not good enough to play varsity. They're not going to tell you that because they know if they tell you that, it's going to be a whole, you know, everything else. I tell my little brother all the time, bro. Bro, you are good enough where you at. Like, Mm -hmm. my my little brother's a sophomore. My little brother's going to play JV this year. I said, bro, play JV. Get good at it. Get better. Once you get better, like, yeah, you can use this time to get better. Forget the stats. Forget the offers. Forget the varsity. But you can have junior mm-hmm. and senior year to get off it, bro. So use the sophomore year to actually get better. Work footwork. Exactly. Work craft. Exactly. If you really want to get better, use the because you because I tell my little brother all the time. My, I went. I watched my little brother spring game. I got his little huddle. So I'll be watching mm-hmm. spring game. I said, little bro, you're good enough to play varsity. You are. But right now, you're not though. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't have the type of like he he a fresh come like my, my little brother didn't play football none through school. He just started playing this what? spring. Like wow. this spring, he just started playing. But he's good. Though. He's good. Yeah, that's what's crazy. Like, he's good, but he's not varsity good. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like you good, but you're not varsity good. Yeah. So I'll be telling like, ball now. Do those kids how you supposed to do those kids mm-hmm. on JV? Do them how you supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. You supposed to do that because when varsity come around, it's gonna be a different game because everyone's trying to get offers. Exactly. Everyone's trying to go to college. Exactly. So we all trying to. It, it was like that my junior year. We all want to go to college, bro. Yeah, so and you I can't mean, expect someone to do that. Like, you yeah. can't expect to have something right then. You can't. Yeah, and if we're being honest, I wish more coaches were open to telling their players that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Specifically with me and my process, um, my sophomore year at Carter, I got moved up two weeks into the season. I'm thinking I'm hot shit because, you know, I'm a sophomore playing varsity. I transfer here. Mm-hmm. I'm better than there. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I get on the field and I'm like, I'm not ready for this, you know? I, You yeah. know me. I'm not a big guy, you know? But it, it came down to I, if I would have had that sophomore year to critique my craft I probably would have had offers way before the end of my junior year they would have came earlier on because by that point I would have been a more well-rounded athlete you know what I mean yeah it's Mm -hmm. I just as players want to rush their craft sometimes if you're not in the right coaching situation the same thing will happen but yeah I'm, I'm glad you told your brother that I'm you're gonna have to send me over his huddle I'm gonna have to um watch his stuff this yeah. yeah, especially now that I, I, I didn't I even know. I to you. Yeah, he's already yeah. in high I'm school. To you. <laughs> That's crazy. Already in high school, already wow. a sophomore, bro. It's crazy. Half and I told him, I told him, like, I'm like, once I get done, I said, once I get done, bro, when I get you know home from school, whatever, mm-hmm. and, you know, once I get my little chance to come home, I said, but I'll train you for that summer, bro. I'll yeah. train you for that winter. You know what I'm saying, like, I will give you a college experience because one thing, like, I want you to understand, bro, is high school is easy. Like high oh, school varsity, far. high school yeah. freshman, that's mm-hmm. easy, bro. College is a different. Like these are we all grown men playing kids, yeah. kid games. Yeah, like like real life. So it's it's way more intense. It's way faster. People mm-hmm. are way stronger, and the mindset is different because everybody was that guy in high school. Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everyone was all that guy. All of us was all district. Like, I was that guy. Yeah, exactly. Like, all district, all conference. Like we was all, all state. In high school. Exactly. We had the actual states like. We had that. Like, and then you get to college. Mm-hmm. Or getting ready to play of the years. Yeah. Like, you really beat these people and these people who got records at their school. Like, mm-hmm. people who played one, like, three, four <clears throat> positions at their high school. Like, they was that, it like, was the man at their school, bro. Yeah. So, you got to look at it to it, bro. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to teach you like you my brother. I'm going to teach you. Like you my you my homeboy at my school, mm-hmm. so we can you can actually understand, bro. This is real, bro. Exactly. Like, people exactly. really play this game with passion. Like as little kids, like you gotta think about it. It be people really three hundred pounds playing like little kids. Yeah. Like like <clears throat> for real. <laughs> like yeah. for real. It's and a I, little kid game with grown men in it. Yeah. And I I, I got a funny story on that, Jaden. You know, Jaden's the best athlete out of all of us by far. Yeah. He runs circles around me and Brandon. But um, Jaden was the one. He he didn't know if he wanted to go to college because 
he was like, I saw how you struggle with the commitment. I know I ain't going to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, I, funniest story ever, his senior year, he gets a call from a coach. I'm not going to name the school or any of that. He asks what time the workouts were. <laughs> The coach goes, yeah, you know, we work out every morning, 5.30. 5.30, 5.30. Did I tell you? 5.30, 5.30 is the wake-up call. The wake-up call yeah. is always 5.30. The mm -hmm. workout starts 6 on the dot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not 6 for 1. You can't Not... even be there at 5.59. Exactly. Like, you really can't be there at 5.59. <clears throat> you have to be there at 5.30. Mm -hmm. The workout starts at 5.55. Like, I tell my little brother that all the time. Yeah. Like, you have to get like if you really want to go to college, bro. Understand don't that's start the commitment that you're time. making. Yeah, yeah, you're making this commitment. Like, exactly. Stuff don't start at six o'clock. It start at five thirty. Mm -hmm. It starts at five fifty five. Exactly. Five forty five. Yeah. You know <laughs> like this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like like I, I, my little, I, I talk to my little brother like that all the time. Like, bro, like get up. Like you have to. Like you have to get up and go. Like, exactly. You have to go do this. He's like, bro, I don't. It's I don't feel like it today, up. bro. It's too early. Nah, Don't roll bro, out of bed. If you early. really want it, show bro, me you want it now. Exactly. <laughs> show me you want it right now. Get yeah. out of bed. So let's go, bro. Let's go yeah. to the field. We're gonna work for an hour, bro. You can come home. You can sleep. You can get up. You go work again. You go home. Sleep. Like exactly. That's what it is. You get a two a day, bro. Mm -hmm. And in college, you really get and a two a day is not even a two a day. Like you sleep, you go work out, you go home. Ours is mm -hmm. a workout. Wait in the locker room five minutes, work yeah. out again. Like it's, well, there's no there's no go home. Like there's none of that. See, us we didn't even have wait in the locker room. So our downtime um from the summer transition period was yoga was our downtime. So we went uh, morning field well no, so it was morning workout. So we're weight room to field to yoga to field to classroom. That was every day. There's no days off, no changing that schedule, but pretty, you know what I mean? You're, mm -hmm. before the school year starts, that commitment, you're almost going through a whole day of work. Yeah, definitely. Like, that's five, basically what it is. Yeah, 5, 5 30 a.m. to is. 8 p.m., your schedule. 8 p.m. Yeah. Every day. And it's loaded. It's exactly. loaded up. Like, exactly. Every minute of the mm -hmm. day is loaded. Something you have, have something, something to do. To do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's not nap time. It's not rest time. Your rest time. Nah, not yeah. rest time. You don't go home. Mm -hmm. Nah. You go, your mm -hmm. rest time is five minutes, ten yeah. minutes, and mm -hmm. you're in the locker room. <laughs> or locker you on room, the way to your next destination. With everybody, or exactly. you on your way to your next destination. That's the only yeah. downtime. Yeah. Time you get to break. That's really it. And I'll tell my little brother, I'll, I'm like, bro, I said, bro, you need to get up. You need to go wash the plate. You need to wash yeah. brush teeth. You need to make something to eat. We need to get out the house. We need to go. We need mm -hmm. to be done. 8.30. 8.30, we can be leaving yep. the house. Yeah. I'm like, look, bro, that ain't going to work, bro. Like, that ain't going to work, bro, because you got to realize, bro, it's things that the college level look at while you in high school. Mm -hmm. Like, that coach is going to come down and say how he is outside of football. Exactly. What is schedule like outside of football? If if y'all weren't doing football right now, what is he doing? Like, that's, exactly. that's, that's things that people really ask. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. college... Like in co especially at the at the power five level, like oh, yeah. this stuff is so this stuff is so business like it's like the fall camp starts six forty five in the morning. Mm -hmm. You have to be on the field at six forty five. You're not on the field at six forty five, you're late. Exactly. You're late. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You got six forty five practice, then you bounce around, and go class. You go class from what, nine o'clock, one o'clock, and then you go meetings from one o'clock to six o'clock. Right, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's a whole day, brother. You can't be, you can't get ready thirty minutes before. You have to be ready hours before, exactly. so you can get the day started. There, like, there's you know no last saying? minute prep. You're prepping for your there's day. There's no last minute daily. prep. Your yeah. prep is is hours beforehand, mm -hmm. days beforehand. Exactly. Because yeah, if that's if if I could say something I did my freshman year that I didn't realize, I didn't realize that preparation started yesterday yeah <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that started yesterday like mm -hmm. you think you're gonna come to practice monday and you didn't drink any water and you're not hydrated you didn't eat the day before and you think you're about to come out and have a great practice like you got a rude away practice. yeah you got a rude awakening you got a rude awakening yeah like, literally throwing up mm -hmm. <laughs> throwing up head hurting losing weight like cramping like but that mm -hmm. stuff is real and like yeah like weight is a big thing too like you can't expect to prepare yourself and your weight's not there you're not even exactly. making weight 
bro, you're not even gonna play you not even a certain weight, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, certain positions have certain weights. So if you're not even a certain weight at playing corner, like, corners are not that big. Like, we really weigh between 175 mm-hmm. to 190. Like, there's no really 200-pound cornerbacks. Yeah. So, if you really, like, under that type of weight, bro, you got to go. They're going to say, no, you can't even practice, bro. You need to go eat. Like, you exactly. need two plates. Exactly. You need three plates. You need to eat all Go ahead, plates. carb like, up, and step on the scale. Yeah. Yeah. Step on that scale, bro. Yeah. Eat that, eat that real quick. Step on the scale. And if you don't step on the scale, if you don't eat, <laughs> if you don't make the weight, you got to go back and eat again. Exactly. Go exactly. Go back and eat again. Yeah. yeah, and I would say, like, um, transition-wise, that was my biggest weakness as well. I've never been a bigger guy, you know. Hell, in high school, I had I had thick thighs though. I don't know if you remember. There was a, we all yeah, our, you you was built yeah, yeah, yeah. We, was, we was all built exactly. Yeah, was but big. kudos to the poti strength and condition because yeah, they. Definitely. Yeah, if you came through Poteet, you leaving looking like you, that. You leaving but, looking like something. Yeah, you had something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, um, I, like I said, Carter was so different. We didn't have any of that. The only reason I kept up that physique and kept up my weight and things like that was kind of just self motivation, you know. But um, I, I yeah, I, I just think um, for me that was my biggest challenge in college though, when. It's so easy to push yourself when you're trying to get there. I mm-hmm. it, but when you get there and you got to maintain it, maintain it. That that's is the, the hard, hard part. part. You know what I mean? That's the hard when part. When you're mm-hmm. especially like in my case, I'm coming in, I'm like, "Dang. I'm not even I'm 1 2 3 4 on depth chart right now." You know what I mean? And I got a, mm-hmm. another freshman on top of me and I'm know I'm better than the freshman who's on top of me, but he could keep his weight and I can't. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's so that's gonna look at it as exactly. You got the weight, but you don't. Exactly. Yeah. Your mm-hmm. accolades don't mean nothing. Your stats don't mean nothing. Your accolades highlights don't mean, don't mean that nothing. don't mean nothing. Exactly. <laughs> Those you, stars don't mean anything. Exactly. If you can't come in and produce for us, you don't matter. Exactly. It matter. Yeah. But I, that I was. Him, I tell my brother that all the time. Like he be he he likes to you know he likes to look good. You know you know you know how yeah you know, yeah like, everybody likes little swag and stuff. And I'm, I'm being on that too. Like I like to look good when I play and stuff. But at the same time, you have to earn that type of stuff. Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like exactly. Yeah, you can mm-hmm. you can you can look good wearing nothing. Well, remember like, you think you been a yeah yeah. Remember remember how Poteet they used to have, is, you can even you, wear visors. Exactly. Yeah, you can. You gotta visor. earn you it. Wear spats. You exactly. Earn that stuff, bro. Yeah. Like, and I see a lot of like it's a lot of freshmen that Poti now who got visors who wear yeah yeah back That's flaps with so the back different. flap out. So Spat, different. Like it's different. Like I don't, like, I don't know. Was there, you couldn't even exactly. Wear it. Like, you could barely wear gloves. Like you got gloves, <laughs> cleats, bands, armbands. That's it. Like and nothing hold up, else. Remember, no your sleeves, gloves had no to be nothing. the green, black, or white. <laughs> green, black, or white. It's. I've said these kids really wearing the. You know the the, the grip boost. You know, yeah. Little thing. Yeah. Like in the. Uh-huh. Bro, you couldn't even wear it. Like Coach exactly. Groves was not. Coach Groves was happen. not. He was like, that's not, not happening. That happened. Exactly. It's not happening. Yeah. It's either green, black, or white, or you had to earn that type of stuff. You exactly. You wear a visor because mm-hmm. you just came here and, nah, I'm not yeah. Do exactly. It. Can't do that, but, bro. But I mean, I, I guess that kind of also shows um, just through the schedule. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. Poti, when I, I know I only went there my freshman and senior year, but still went through that Poti system. You know what I mean? That's still a lifestyle that I kind of kept even after leaving but more so it's it showed that um you know when we were there you were winning you know what I mean yeah that's all mm-hmm. that's win you know um, before, <laughs> before we were there was the TPW under coach Jackson the tough mm-hmm. people and even though even when coach Gross came in we didn't really use TPW, but it was still something yeah. that stuck around. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. when Malik was there, his senior year, and those seniors, they their freshman year was Coach Jackson. So that's something that they yeah. still repped, and that's still something that through the locker room kind of showed. And because of that, I, I, I don't know what year it might have ended, but Poteet's real different now. 
um, than it was. Yeah, Burns River. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Go, I go back all the time. Every time I go home, I always go back. I always, you know, mm-hmm. work out on the field. I always go stay with up with Coach Bird, you know, all the yeah. guys there. And I look around, and I, and I you know, and I, um, and I look around, like, just the community, you know, just the locker room, mm-hmm. just the, the people that's there. And I look at I'm like, bro, this stuff wasn't like that exactly. when we was here. Like, exactly. when we was there, like, bro, we had, we lived, like, I go to the fields, and, you know, you know, you know, when we was younger, we go to the field. It's 30, 40, 50 people at the field. Let's yeah. Play. 707, let's run on one. Like, it's 707 not, every no weekend. More. Like, In every NLC. weekend. Like, it was 707. And exactly. obviously, it was seven on seven every weekend. Like mm-hmm. someone was at the field. Let's do one on one. Let's run seven on seven. Like we was gonna do something. And I just feel like once I went back the last time, mm-hmm. like none of that was there. Like yeah, wow. they got the turf field. They got the pavilion on the turf yeah. field. But like, why y'all got like they setting up everything for you guys to win? Exactly. And you're, you're not even taking you advantage position. of this stuff. Remember, they you, they're giving y'all a turf field. <laughs> So exactly. You don't got to go find a field when it's wet. If it's raining, you can still go because something's blocking the rain. Mm-hmm. Like you got everything you like, you got everything you need to win. No one's utilizing exactly. the stuff you have to win. Like exactly. y'all got a weight room. You can ask Coach McClain, open the weight room for me, Coach. He will gladly come and open the weight mm-hmm. room, y'all. Like, like, like that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna go and coach. When I coach, I'm gonna literally go and I, I asked Coach Groves this probably like a month ago. I was like, Coach Goes, I want to come and coach. He was like, okay, you need to you know, get this, get this, get this. I was like, okay, cool, I can do that. So I'm, I'm getting my stuff together. And good. I'm just thinking, like, and I was just thinking, like, bro, the stuff that I'm going to do, like, when I start coaching, bro, like, I'm going to change, like, Coach T. Because, you know, Walt just got signed as the running back coach uh, at Coach T. What? You know, Walt's a running back Let's coach. Let's go. Yeah, Walt's a running back okay. coach at Coach T. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, Walt's there. You mm-hmm. never know who else going to come back. Exactly. Coach. And if we get. And I was like, if everyone who played at Poti know, like, who know that who coach knows Poteet exactly. come back and coach and know how it was, it's going to be that way exactly. at some point again. Exactly. Like, at some point again, it's going to be how it was mm-hmm. 2018, 2017, 2016, exactly. 2015. Like, it's going to, those times when, when Poti was consistently at the top of the, at the, top of the chart. Exactly. It's going to be yeah. like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. 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 I can see it. I can see it. And that's that's a good vision to have. I mean, like I said, I maybe in the future that might be in my future too. I don't know what cards God has for yeah. me as far as that. I've um, I've been doing my thing up here, but you know, you never know. Um, I would love to see Poteet get back to how it was, and I don't mean the wins and losses. I mean the program itself. You know what I mean? Program. Some yeah. stuff was just yeah. unacceptable. Some. Hell, I remember, like, when we wanted to get on the field, I don't know if you remember, this was 2014, 2013, before the turf field was there. You know, mm. we're jumping the fence. <laughs> jumping the fence. You got to jump the yeah, fence again. <laughs> exactly. Like They're kicking us off the field. They're, like, you have, like, yeah, you they're saying, hey, you got to so go. Bad. They're kicking us off the field. Exactly. Go. Now it's that's like, that's open. That's how it should be. Like, Gate, gates unlocked. It's open. But nobody shows up. No one's there. Like exactly. no one's there, but exactly. they just have to kick us off the field. Like mm-hmm. I feel like I can't. I can't even be mad at a group of guys who really sneak onto a football field and just work out. Exactly. If I have that's to kick dedication. y'all off, that's dedication. That means mm-hmm. I, you shouldn't even want to kick these guys off because if these guys jump the fence to really work craft, like these exactly. really, these really working the craft, just let it. Like let it be. Like mm-hmm. you just gotta see. Because I feel like if if. If the community, if Poteet's community starts seeing that these kids really want to play ball, like it's a different time zone from what it was. Like mm-hmm. from then till now, like like these kids got more say than what we did. Like, exactly, you know, by we didn't far. Really have more say. So by yeah, far, so we, they said when they said get off the field, we had to literally get off the field. Mm-hmm. Coach Groves was gonna come outside, and we was gonna do up downs. The school not even started. You know what I'm saying? And then you still got to go after you're done with the and You got to go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But then you got to go and jump the fence to get out. Like, but now, like, the, the gate's open. They tell exactly. you, like, they exactly. shouldn't even say none of that. Like, it should be open, uh, like, open gate, open weight room. Mm-hmm. I feel like all these kids that go to Poti should have some type of open gate exactly. to work. Like, like mm-hmm. if you, and if you want to keep these kids out of the streets, out of jail, out of trouble, let these kids use these things 
to if they get bored and these kids want to go and say these kids get bored and they, and they feel like going to rob somebody they don't have to do that because exactly. all they can say is but no i'm gonna go i'm gonna go exactly to the field, i'm gonna like, go work out you know what i'm saying like i'm yeah. gonna work out bro like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even want none of that i don't want nothing to do with that and i feel like that's kind of how i was because I, I got plenty of stories of me being kicked out for a piece of air. Like, oh, they I think we all do. Every day. Yeah. Man, yeah. They used, to kick, they used to kick us off every day. Yeah. So I was just like, bro, I'm, I'm not even finna go and, and, and try to go rob nobody because mm -hmm. why would I go do that when the field open? Like, exactly. I'd rather go be over here. where We put no Snapchat. Say, we got a 707. <laughs> we got a 707. Exactly. In, in 10 minutes, pull up. Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, I was, I was just looking at it like, but that was the only thing that really kept me out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Cause I would say I wanted to, I, I wanted to just be on the field. Like, right. the field was like my sanctuary. Like when I knew I was down and I was, I was out of, and I couldn't be around nobody, and I was frustrated, whatever, sad, mm -hmm. mad, whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna go to the field. Like, right. I'm gonna just work out, work this pain away, go home, smile, like see something better. Cause the one thing I can't do. Is I can't live, I can't try to live my life on the edge, mm -hmm. knowing that it's a bigger purpose there. Like it's exactly. something bigger than than trying to make a look, like trying to make fifty dollars, you know, trying to mm -hmm. make a hundred dollars. Like, yeah, yeah, a hundred dollars can come, but what's better than a hundred million dollars? Exactly. You know what I'm exactly. That's gonna take a little longer. Yeah, it's gonna take mm -hmm. a little longer, but I'd rather take a hundred million than a hundred right now. Exactly. I don't need that hundred dollars right now. I want that hundred million that's gonna take nineteen, twenty years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I want that. That's what I'm working to. And I just think from I'm a, I'm gonna put that in perspective whenever I coach. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it's the environment that we are in. The environment because we all know like we all know mesquite at that time was was a horrible environment. Like, it was a horrible environment. Yeah. We had yeah. Gangs. You know, it was gangs, it right, was up drugs, street, it was, right up street, right up street in Canada. Right up, it's right always up the street, some, right in Canada. Always, right always something street. going on. And yeah, there's always something going on. And mm -hmm. once I looked at, I'm like, bro, it's a thing to where you can, you can, you can, you can have, like, you can withstand this environment because mm -hmm. you can't. If you, if you can't leave a situation, you can't just can't leave the situation. Right. But you can do something about the situation. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You can definitely do something about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can't leave. But you can say, all right, I'm gonna stay away from over here. Cause I'm gonna go to this field, or I'm gonna stay away from 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 the drugs. I'm gonna go to the court, or I'm gonna go get on the track, or I'm gonna go get in the weight room. Like it was, you know, it was something like that. Like just for the kids to find something that takes the mind off of just trying to, you know, sell drugs or you know, tote guns. Like, yeah. Cause don't get me wrong, like I was one of them kids. I was one of them kids where. I mean, you know, I was around it. Fast you know, money sounds good. Fast money said, always sounds good. Said, fast, exactly. fast money sounds great. Yeah. I was around it. I was thinking like, hey, this guy's coming back with $10,000. Exactly. Like, I, you know, I, mean, I never seen $10,000 for it. I ain't never seen $10,000. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I was just like, it was just like, bro, why risk my life mm -hmm. for $10,000? Well, I'd rather risk my life for this $100 million that's 15 You know what I'm saying? That's 15 yeah. years from now. Like mm -hmm. the longer road is better, even exactly. though it's longer, yeah, it's longer. Yeah, you're gonna have to work but a little bit harder with that time. Then you gotta it's work a little it. bit harder. Like, it's worth it. Like, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that waiting 15 years for this hundred million is yeah. worth it than ten to ten thousand exactly. ten minutes. That's exactly. Worth it. Yeah, I mean, and That's even worth. even just going, this will actually go back a little bit more, but it's something we already touched on, but. I think with the points you just made, I can really bring it back up. Um, it just goes into the coaching staff we had at Poti. I, I mm -hmm. can't say anything but good things about it. Um, just because I, like I said, I saw both sides of the track. You know what I mean? I was at Poti, mm -hmm. but I also um, went to Carter. I, yeah. Carter had just as many phenomenal athletes, but from my senior class at Carter, just through the athletes alone, we got two two kids on the squad who actually lost murder charges. You separate murder charges. Ooh. Like, but think yeah. about that. When you're, it's one thing to push football on kids and be like, yeah, you can go to the league, you can be a great athlete, you really good, you fast, you're strong. But when you're not pouring into these kids' souls, you know what I mean? You're not teaching. Yeah, you can be a great athlete, but you also gotta be a good person too. You know, mm -hmm. I, it, it shows. And like I said, it's not like they were bad kids or anything. No, it's just when you're taught 
if you're a good athlete, you could do whatever you want. Yeah. When you're mm -hmm. put in that situation, you know what I mean? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to shoot them because I'm going to get away with it. That's really the mindset that some of these dudes had, you yeah. know? And it's saying a mm -hmm. lot because so my junior year at um, Carter. I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a story. I'm not even gonna put his business out there. Yeah. One of the guy, one of the guys, you know, we went to school with. Mm -hmm. He had a, went, went to college. Had a, you know, just wanted to, wanted to be something that, you know, what I'm saying. Yeah, to be yeah. That, that he wasn't. Exactly. You know what I'm saying. And Get, I, I know, felt bad getting when caught I, up. Exactly. And, yeah, I, I feel bad. Dude, for him. when I tell you, like, when I read that, bro, you I, were great. It hurt bro. my soul because he was a great athlete. You know what I'm saying? You were great, bro. Like, you were really, like, he was really on his. Like, he's supposed to have been in the league right now. He was supposed to be drafted yeah. this year. Like, yeah. this year. Exactly. And I, like, when I call him and I tell him, I'm like, bro, I, like, I call him. I, when it first happened, I called him. I say, bro, what was you thinking, bro? Like, what, what, what was going through your head, bro? Mm -hmm. It's like, I was like, I don't really know, fam. I just got caught up in the wrong stuff. And I was like, fam, that's one thing we always said, fam. Exactly. Don't get caught up with those type, like those type of things. But like, you know, fam. Yeah, I ain't saying, like, I ain't saying, like, you feel me? You can't go in and, and, and do what you was doing. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we both know what was happening. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But of course. I said, you, you can't, you can't, well, I ain't saying don't go do what you was doing. But know that if you would have got caught in that, Mm -hmm. You gotta know, fam. You're gonna get caught. Like exactly. doing stuff like that, you're gonna get caught, fam. And it don't matter who you are, fam. Even the best of the best people who do that, yeah. shit, like they get caught, fam. Think so of how many guys like, from the league end up in prison. End up in prison, like doing dumb stuff like exactly. that. Cause you think you're a millionaire, you got this money, people can't really do nothing mm -hmm. to you, or you're just gonna get probation. No, bro, nah. you're gonna go to prison, folks. Like they gonna yeah. come and get yeah. you, fam. And. Mm -hmm. I want to. I was. That's what I'm saying. When I was talking to him, like, 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 bro, you can't even be doing this. I'm like, but so what's next, bro? He's like, I'm trying to play football again, bro. I'm like, fam, you can't play football, you know, with that type of mindset. Yeah. Like, you gotta, you gotta wash that shit out, bro. Mm -hmm. I was like, fam, because I remember when we was when I first went to college, I told you, fam, bro, be cool, fam. It's only you. I said, bro, be cool, fam. Because mm -hmm. one thing about it, fam, one thing we can't do is fuck this up. Exactly. Not for this community, fam, because it's really after 2019. Hey, after 2020, yeah. there's nothing. Like after exactly. 2020, it's nothing. Exactly. Like, you have to be this last. Like, you're the last one. Like you're the mm -hmm. last one. You have to like make this stepping stone for exactly. everybody. Like everybody got to say, okay, Cam went. Uh, this guy went. Mm -hmm. Uh, Makai went. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, Jimmy yeah. went. Like they got to see this type of stuff. And if these people seeing this stuff, they gonna understand. Like, okay. I see they did it. I went to school with them. I seen how they how they how they went about their stuff. Let me try that. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Like, but if you given the if you given the the bad habits and you given the bad mojo to the young kids who watching you, and you don't even think they watching you, but they watching you, bro. Exactly. Like, these kids see you. They see everything that you doing, everything that you put on social media, everything you say at your mouth, everything you do in school, bro. These people see that. Exactly. That's why I try to like I try to tell my little brother like. Bro, your social media will either be your biggest regret or it'll be your biggest success, fam. Exactly. One or the other, fam. Because you got to think about it. You can post one thing on social media mm. that, and can it'll ruin be, everything. that can really, it can ruin everything, everything. for you, bro. Everything. Like Years of one, work will be gone in blunt, a you, you literally got one blunt, one drink, mm -hmm. one girl, like anything, one screenshot, anything, bro. Exactly. It can ruin that. Exactly. Bro, that's, why, that's why I tell them, bro, don't put guns on Instagram. Don't cuss on people on Instagram. If you got beef with somebody, don't go through Instagram. Go see them. Mm -hmm. Words is better than doing this. Because exactly. if you're doing this, people can screenshot. A screenshot is too easy nowadays. And that's that, all people need. You can make a screenshot look like anything you want it to look like. You can make a screenshot like anything. Like, exactly. That's what I'm trying to like. It looks a certain way because mm -hmm. everyone gonna perceive this screenshot a certain way. So if you out here and you and you doing dumb stuff on Instagram, yeah, I can do a screenshot and say, oh boom, he was talking like this towards some type of female and woo woo woo, woo and boom, all your post it. Once they post, once they post it, every scout done saw that somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every NFL scout done said, oh no, nah, yeah, no, nah. 
we don't, we don't even want him. Yeah, nah, let's let's leave him alone. That's that's you know that's so, a locker room toxic. I, yeah, yeah, that's, it, that's a locker room toxic. Like, yeah, we don't even it, need that. It don't even got to be real all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it ain't even got to be real it, all the time. Like, it it just down, the way it looks. Exactly, it's the way people perceive exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, if people perceive it a certain way, that's what mm-hmm. it is. And you can't yeah. change nobody's mind because at the end of the day, fam, the social media is so big nowadays, and anyone can be found on social media. Exactly. Anyone. Exactly. Like everything you need to know is on social media. Mm-hmm. Everything you need to know. Yeah. It's like, there's nothing. Like, there's nothing exactly. you can do. You can't even keep your life off Instagram. Like, I try to be. I try to be so private. Everything that I do, someone sees it. Someone mm-hmm. sees it. Like I can't. I can't even be on my phone when I do certain stuff because exactly. I already know. If I'm on my phone while I got something in my hand, or if I'm trying to record myself, you know, with my homeboys or whatever, someone going to see me and exactly. say, oh, you was at this club. You was at this club, oh, you know what I'm saying? Didn't so you like, go to this party? Like, Didn't I see you with this? Did you go to this? Exa- yeah. I seen you at this party. This is you, huh? Like, yeah, like, you got to, like, you got to mm-hmm. realize this type of stuff. Like, people see you, and people notice you. Exactly. Especially if you play college football and you got a big-time name. Everywhere you go, somebody know who you are. Like mm-hmm. someone knows you. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean. yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'll, I'll close out with this question. Um, but talk to me about Cam off the field. Um, what, what Man. are some things going on in your life that you know? This is you. Talk to me about that. Um. Who is Cam off the field? Shoot, Cam is man. I'll say I'm I'm really I'm really laid back off the field. I'm I'm, mm-hmm. I'm I'm a very quiet person off the field. Um, I think that what makes me different off the field is that whenever like I I connect with people like I'm yeah. real like I gel with people real good. So mm-hmm. um, like when I first got here, when I first got here, none of these guys knew me. Like, you know, none, none of these guys, these guys didn't even know I really came from Utah State until I told them. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Until I told these guys. And that was, was a couple of days after I told these guys. Too. Yeah, they knew Coach Brown. Yeah, they knew Coach Brown came from Utah State. But they didn't know that, you know what I mean? I was that type of player in yeah. Utah. Because they knew Cam on the field. Right. Like, he was talking shit on the field. They know I be talking shit on the field. <laughs> I mean, I'm agree. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, yeah, yeah. Just that person on the field. But off the field, like, I was just laid back, like. Yeah, I joke around, I laugh, I give, I like to laugh, you know, and stuff like that. But I feel like the type of person that I am, like, I'm just, like, real mellow sometimes. Like, yeah, I get rowdy. Like, you know, we all get rowdy. You know, exactly. coming from Texas, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. get rowdy. But I just think that um, once I actually get comfortable around, you know, once I get comfortable in an environment, mm-hmm. I kind of loosen up. I kind of, like, show my personality, like, you know what I'm saying? So, like. I like to dress, you know, like, I get fly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Whenever we yeah. go to place, I, you know, I get fly, whatever, you know. Um, I'm really just, uh, I, I'm I'm active on social media. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm always on social media. I might not, like, I post a lot, but I be watching, like, you know what I'm saying? I of might course. not, I might not see everything, but, you know, I'm I'm always watching. I see stuff. Yeah. stuff. Um, you know, just, just, really just enjoying it with my, with my boys, for real. I, I like to make. I like to enjoy the people that surround me. That makes yeah, sense. Cause, that's good. Like I said, like because I don't, I don't been around people who who really lost their lives like at my age. Like yeah, you know, it's been, it was a guy here. It was a guy here two years ago who lost his life on the football team. Like and and these boys talk about it all the time. Like man, it's the name uh, Bryce Beacom. That was talking about Beak. Like bro, I be Beak, bro. That was talking about Beak. Like, how Beak was type of person Beak was. And like I never knew who Beak was, but mm-hmm. uh, at Utah State I used to play with. It someone who went to JUCO would be. So yeah. I used to, he used to always tell me stories about Beak. So I, I knew who Beak was, but I didn't really know who he was. Like, I didn't even know he went here, but he yeah. went here. Though. So I was like, I was like, oh, okay, I know, I know Beak, okay. And so like, once I heard that, I'm like, bro, like, that's crazy because I'm coming into an environment to where, like, this stuff over here is like, it's different because these people actually care about each other. And like, I'm a caring person. I feel like I'm very charismatic. Like, if I care for you, I really care for you. If I like you, I really care for you. So it's just like me being the type of person that I am, I always want to see you, you feel me, up here. Like right. the 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 being down part and the and the and the moping around, like I'm not even that type of person. Like I'm mm-hmm. a, if I see you down, if I see you sad, I'ma come up to see you. What's up, bro? Like how how your day going? Like you know what I'm saying? And you maybe not want to talk to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? You may not want to talk. 
but I'm gonna make you talk to me. Like you're gonna you're gonna talk to me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna do everything I got to. Like, I'm gonna poke, I'm gonna mess with you, I'm gonna tag, I'm gonna bump, I'm doing everything I got to to make you talk, bro. Cause at the end of the day, fam, we all struggling. Like right. everyone around us is struggling, fam. So why not be happy together but fight your own demons when you buy yourself? Like cause we all fight our demons. Exactly. You know we all fight our own demons. Mm-hmm. And you know how it is. Yeah. Everyone fight yeah. their demons. But I feel like once I get around my God, like once I get around these guys, like it just it makes you forget about certain stuff. Like it makes you forget about the things that that was hard. Like you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I think that once I once I found that, I was like, yeah, like I kind of I kind of I kinda figured out who I was like outside of the field because I used to think football was just me. Like I, all day I do is play football. Mm-hmm. Outside of the field, I don't talk to people. Like, I kind of I used to. I used to play football. I used to go to practice and go straight home, go in my room, shut the door, lock the door, turn on the movie, watch a movie all day. Like that's kind of how I was. Mm-hmm. I, once I heard, like once I once I started, like like once my grandma died, my my uh, my grandpa died, and you know I was I was actually going through things that was that was you know like real life, like real life, like trauma, real life situation. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bro, I gotta like I really gotta find some some stuff to do because. You know, life's short. Like I'm losing these people who really close to me. Like I really talk, I talked to my grandma hours before she died the next morning. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it was. Right. I talked to her at like twelve o'clock. She died at like one o'clock the next day. Like one o'clock the next like even. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like like that type of stuff. Like it really made me think. But like life is so short because in twelve hours the person I love the most really left me, and I was like, if I literally leave tomorrow. What is people gonna think about me? Exactly. What they gonna say about me? They gonna do? They just gonna say, "Oh, he did play football." I don't want people to know that I play football. Like that's it. Like that's that's it. Like yeah. all he did was play football. But you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. all I want people to just say, "Oh, he did play football." He ain't really talk to nobody here. The mess people like that. Nah, I want them people to say, "Cam was a caring person. Cam was cool as hell." Like, bro, we can call Cam anything, bro. He can pull up, bro. We gonna laugh. We gonna joke. We gonna do everything, bro. Like, I feel like having that type of, having that type of, like, that type of stuff on you, like, that attached to your name is probably one of the greatest feelings you can have. Bro. Yeah. It's like knowing that you can light up a room like this. Like, I can literally light up a room that easy and not even trying to toot my own horn. But I really can. And I just felt I have the people around me to where if I walk in the room, like, if, we go, if I go to my locker room right now, and I say I'm sad about something, and my teammates see me over there sad. All I'm gonna walk them to. Like I was saying, um, I want you on here because you're just inspirational, especially from when it comes to the Mesquite community. You know, um, you said it best. After pretty much 2020, I, I couldn't tell you what's going on at Poti, honestly, um, and I don't mean mm. that in like a negative way, but more so it's almost like they're just in a transition period um as a program it's not what it was when you know we were there but um i I really do hope and see in the near future you know poti going back to how it was so um, definitely yeah uh i mean i i while i have you on here i do want to promote your merch um through your nil um you want to speak on it, talk on it just a little bit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah, and this is the you you do earn a percentage of those sales though. Yeah. So it's yeah, not like yeah, you just yeah. pay into a company. Cam actually does get some type yeah, of percentage yeah, yeah. in that. Actually, um, some type of percentage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of percentages, uh, <laughs> I know I was gonna end it, but I gotta ask. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> all right 
so the new NCAA game is supposed to drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, God. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, 20, in 2014, I was really upset because I wanted um, NCAA 15 because I was going to make sure Malik went to the league at least on the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, fast forward, got to be what, six, seven, eight, nine years, something like however many years it's been something since like then. It's you in the game <laughs> now. Huh? So, I, I know there's been some talk of um, some people been upset in the football world um, over money as far as the NIL side of the um, that deal goes. If you don't mind me asking, feel free to plead the fifth. But where do you stand on that whole thing? <laughs> no, I, you know, I, 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 I got to put you on the spot this one time. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to lie, bro. I, I I really might have to plead the fifth, bro. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a thing, though. It's a thing, though. I know. It's kind of how NIL. NIL kind of work off of, it, it really works off of you. Exactly. But with the game, with the game in it, the game has to pay the players mm-hmm. and the school. Exactly. See what I'm saying? Exactly. Because the yeah. NIL, the NIL, they can't pay you if you if you have like, so like my school, like my NIL can't pay me with this song. Like exactly. If I take a picture with this song and I try to sell it. Like I'll be ineligible because I'm trying to use the school name mm-hmm. to promote myself. Exactly. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So if if I take this off and I only have my my clam shirt on, I can use that, but I can't use like my clamp my clam shirt and I put the Washington State logo right exactly. here. Exactly. Like I can't do that. Mm-hmm. So that's the only like that's the only thing behind it. But like. Like percentage wise, like NIL percentage wise, I I I'll get all like NIL, I get all that percentage wise. But it's just it's just like a business, like like you know you you know when you when you when you vendor, you know what I'm saying, or you get like yeah. a, like an overseed, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You have to pay someone. It, it's uh, kind of like that, like yeah, yeah you get uh-huh. every benefit, but somebody gets I have a percentage. to pay someone that, exactly. yeah, because they gotta make the shirt, get exactly. the name, back shirt, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Okay, but I mean, so more so my questions uh, is, I know the big argument was um, with the NCAA game, people were saying um, that the production of it was going to go on some type of hiatus because the players were saying they weren't getting enough. Um, I I just want to know, personally, what side of that were you on? You can still plead the fit, though. So, Repeat your question. So, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with the NIL, or I'm sorry, with the upcoming video game, um, they were saying the college football players union. Are you even part of player? You're part of players union. Are you yeah, in it? Okay, yeah. cool. Um, they were saying that the players union was pleading for more money for the players yeah. in it. Is is that how you feel as well, or are you on the side of? I can I can answer that because yeah, yeah. think about it. Uh, so so it, it's kind of like it's kind of like the NIL thing. So mm-hmm. you know NIL they pay you to use your name, right? Exactly. During the um, from the from the from the NCAA from the NCAA's 06 through fourteen, mm-hmm. they wasn't the guys exactly. NIL wasn't exactly. a, it wasn't mm-hmm. a thing. At the time. So these guys were saying that y'all can't use my name because like if you use my name and these people can't pay me, why do mm-hmm. you think you can put me on? Hey, exactly. You see what I'm saying? Like, exactly. But now that we got NIL and they feel like, well, some of these players are getting million dollar NILs and six figure NILs, and we have to pay them six figures to put them on a game when mm-hmm. you're already getting figures on the NIL. Exactly. Yeah. You know That's kind of how they're looking at it. I mean, it really doesn't matter to me because, yeah. really, I don't even care to be on NCAA. I want to be on Madden. Like, Madden is exactly. kind of like. That's that's the really goal. Win. That means you made it. That's the goal is to get on Madden. Yeah, that's the goal. Mm-hmm. But it it would be nice to be on NCAA. No, it, mm-hmm. it would be nice to be on NCAA. But me personally, like, I won't even be on NCAA. Like, I'll, I'll be gone by the time the NCAA even comes out. Like, the NCAA comes out next year. Yeah. I don't even have another yeah. year. Like, let's see here. So 
I'll be I'll be mad in twenty twenty four. Like you know what I'm saying, I'll, I'll be on Madden twenty four, but I won't be on ACA. So like, yeah, the 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 player union is. Eh. I mean, it really wouldn't it. make sense. It. Like, cause you know what I'm saying, like, I, it wouldn't matter to me. Like, mm-hmm. y'all, y'all not gonna put me for it. Y'all not putting exactly. me in. But, like, I mean, but I feel like for the for the guys that is like lower, like, yeah. I think they should. Or I say the people who don't have six figure NILs should get a maybe fifty thousand. Fifty thousand is the cap. Like that's the cap. Yeah. Of, of what you should pay for that. But anything past fifty thousand, I feel like they pushing it because Yeah. They gotta fund like the NCAA got exactly. Money. Exactly. Got yeah. The NCAA got the NCAA got millions of dollars, like millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Like the school has millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Like each school, like each each school, each Power Five school, each G Five school. These got these schools have millions of dollars, depending on who they play, where they play, exactly. bowl game, coaches, uh, boosters, pass boosters, like investments. Like people invest into certain colleges for this thing to like to to, to skyrocket. Because right. this, for example, let's let's give an example for it. For example, LSU. Mm-hmm. Alabama, these people got, they got these ten-time national champions. Mm-hmm. They got crazy amount of NFL guys. Yeah, crazy amount of guys who are in the NFL right now who's giving back, who got communities, names, just repping the school, and all they hear and every, only people that's hearing it is the fans. So the exactly. fans are just tuning. In. They just get it. the fans are just tuning in, and the games be like they be like. They be cracking, like you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. the games be jumping. It's like all of this is a ticket sale. Okay. They gonna make LSU probably makes LSU Stadium probably holds a hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Each ticket is maybe twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. Twenty dollars a hundred thousand. You're putting up billions on a weekly basis. Oh yeah. Billions yeah. of dollars a season. Like mm-hmm. this is billions of dollars a season. Like you really putting up money. Exactly. And Alabama, you got folks like you got like programs like Alabama who got Nick Saban, who really been coaching Alabama for like twelve years, maybe fifteen mm-hmm. years, who really up maybe a million, maybe a hundred million, close to a billion dollars coaching college football. Exactly. Exactly. See yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. It makes perfect sense. I mean, yeah, I I just wanted to know what side of that you were on, but um, that's crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I got you. Well, say, man, uh, I just want to say thank you for taking out time. I know I said I only want an hour of your time. I have taken an hour and a half. I apologize for that. I thought it was just an hour. Yeah, yeah. We're we're at an hour and 49 going on. We're going on two hours, man. It's been a long conversation. But, I mean, it's it's, I ain't talked to you in a while, so it felt good to hear your voice again. Um. Like I said, I'm rooting for you, all my other Poti guys. Um, I ain't got no Carter guys really playing anything now. So, you know, um, more than anything, I'm rooting for you guys. I'm excited to see what you do this year. Um, you don't even know that to my DB's last season, I was telling them, yeah, you were that guy I had them watching film on, believe it or not. But that's also because I know you personally. And I know your process more than, you know, most of them might. So um, thank you for hopping on here with me. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Again, like I said, you guys make sure you check out his merch. Um, that's what's going to be beneficial. Um, NIL is an amazing thing. I love that college athletes are officially able to make some type of compensation. But, you know, when it comes down to that, we got to support from our end as well. I, as I told you, I'm gonna support you in spirit, but forty nine dollars, I, I can't do that for you. You know, I got a baby, baby. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's not in my cards. But um, thank you um, so much. Um, with that being said, that'll go ahead and wrap up this episode. Um, it's been real. Thank you, Cam. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. You guys have a great rest of your day. Appreciate it. All right.